That's what you do. You go, <laughs> and then just literally fucking just shut the throttle. Mine is not locked by the shop. And today we're talking about ideal combustion. So, um, I'm going to do some videos soon coming up on all the different types or most of the different types of combustion chambers. And you might have noticed nowadays that there are basically two combustion chambers or three combustion chambers that have kind of dominated the way um, that three different types of engines work. So the first one is uh, the two-stroke combustion chamber, which is a symmetrical, pretty much a symmetrical um, domed uh, with a squish band uh, combustion chamber. For, to, excuse me, for four strokes we have the pent roof uh, combustion chamber. So two strokes we generally have a combustion chamber that looks like this kind of thing or other variants of it where this is your squish band then you have a dome, it can be any kind of variant of this, but basically it's a dome. You know what I mean? You can have it in blue and all this right, but it's a dome. And then for four strokes, fucking pen, see you later. Four strokes, we have uh, what we call a pent roof. You have a bit of a squish band, and then you have a pent roof, which is basically like that. Or like that, that's how we go. So that's your pent roof, and that has your valves in all the rest of it. And then, on uh, diesels, you generally have a, it, it can have pre-chambers or what have you, but your combustion chamber generally sits in the, inside your piston. So there's the three different types, but what I want to talk about is there are many types. There's bathtubs and there's God knows what and there's all this, that and the other of different, um, bloody I'm spitting everywhere. Um, different combustion chambers. So, what is the perfect combustion chamber? Someone sent me a message a couple of weeks ago saying, what is the perfect one? So the perfect combustion chamber is a sphere. Right? And tell them, look at the state of that fucking circle. <laughs> um, is a sphere. And the reason why it's a sphere is because, let's just take a slice right down the middle, is that when combustion occurs here, when ignition, sorry, when ignition because you have an ignition event from this theoretical spark plug that fires lasers right into the middle or whatever, it's not in the way, then you get a flame front that propagates outwards, which will mean that you'll have a nice distribution of um, a nice distribution of pressure, the pressure will gradually increase, everything's lovely, you know, and everything is good. There's a problem with this though is that for this, well one, it's a shape that you cannot change the volume of. You know, you cannot physically have a, a, a contained ball that then expands and contracts. Uh, the other thing as well is, is that how would you get anything into this? And this, that's one of the problems. As soon as you have to try and introduce something into this, into this perfect sphere, the mix has to be perfect. For combustion to be stable like this, the mix has to be a homogeneous, it has to be perfect, there has to be the right amount of fuel and air everywhere. So what you can do, and what was done, is someone said, well we can't have this, but we can have this. We can cut this in half and make this a hemisphere, and then we can stick our piston here. You know what I mean? Then we can do that. Yeah, of course. Any <laughs> road. So then you try and do this. There's one problem you might notice with this straight away. This is what the Americans call the hemi. This is an hemisphere. This is a hemisphere. You know, this is a. Uh, it's a snow globe. You know what I mean? The problem with this snow globe is we are missing something here. Is that our combustion wouldn't happen there because that's not where our ignition source is. Our ignition source would be somebody, it was somewhere else. So your ignition source would take place here, just say, and then you get a flame front that looks like this. And because of this, now this profile that you have, it is now uneven. Um, 
and no matter where you put the spark plug you cannot get that uh, pressure increase that you wanted. Now people might think well why would you want it down here because obviously your pressure is increasing and they think it's kind of like a sound wave where it's got to hit the sides and that'll just push on your head. No, 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 no. That's the flame from the entire um, pressure increase actually starts at the piston so it'd actually be better because it's, it'd initiate a, a high pressure region at the piston, the thing you want to extract. So it'd actually be more efficient doing this. And someone is probably going to ask, why don't they put um, spark plugs in pistons? That's a different video. That's a good question. We'll get to that in another video. But um, the hemisphere isn't, you know, it, it, it isn't brilliant. It isn't what you think it is. You think, well, perfect combustion is a sphere. Go for half of it, you get half perfect combustion. You know what I mean? So the other problem is as well is now, and this is the problem with Hemis, and this is why the end, the uh, Americans are idiots for sticking with it, is that your um, your compression ratio is always going to be fucking shocking. So how do you work out the volume of this? Well, the volume of a sphere. Fucking hell, we go in. The volume of a sphere is four thirds uh, pi uh, cubed, as much as I remember. And then you just have to basically divide this all by two because it's a hemisphere. So when you work all of this out, the relationship between your cylinder and your hemisphere, because obviously the bore is always going to affect your. Um, the volume of your sphere, uh, of your hemisphere, and when you do that, you get to basically what we call a, 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 a theoretical limit on whatever compression ratio you can have. Where was I? Oh yeah, um, if you've got the, the, so you get this theoretical limit. You get this theoretical. There's this theoretical limit of um, how much of a compression ratio you have. Now, yes, obviously, if you just keep on increasing your bore, uh, your stroke, then yes. That number is going to go up but in the realms of reality with um, v8s and stuff stuff that does use hemis and other engines in the past like rovers and stuff that use hemis and uh, so on but uh, you reach this theoretical limit i think it's 9.7 to 1 and 9.8 if you have a flat piston um, it's about 9.8 or something like that is the theoretical limit of how much of a compression ratio you can have now if you look at most motorbikes and stuff they're, they're rocking 11 12 some of them even nearly 13 to 1 compression ratios and that's the problem with the Hemis and all the rest of it and you might see a picture like this where what they have to do is they they have to add shitloads of material to the top of these pistons for these Hemis um, and they, they look weird, they're not hemispheres obviously because you have to have clearance for your valve opening and all the rest of it and uh, so on but for valve overlap generally um, but the, uh, the the problem with having this Hemi is well let, no let's just go with that there's, here's another problem as soon as you put this big lump in there there's two problems with this one when you have ignition you've got this really weird ignition now that in a sense it's like a cone ignition it's a bit weird and as soon as that piston falls it starts to fall down uh, yeah it's, it's weird stuff starts to happen you got to remember the whole reason why we did the hemisphere is because we're trying to get close to this this theoretical perfect combustion, um, you know, this theoretic per, theoretical perfect combustion um, volume for combustion to take place. In. We're getting further and further from a sphere here. We're now turning this into a fucking cone. You know, we've now turned this into a a cone with the fucking mi the middle as an exclusion zone. So basically only just all of this, not the centre section. So now we've completely just done exactly what we didn't want to do. We're now shifting the goalposts completely. And this is just to get that above that um, restrictive hemispherical to bore relationship. Um, and again, your flame front acts a bit weird when you start to do this because you're doing this skinny little passageway of, of, of combustion. Not only that, not only that is, you just increase the weight of your piston massively. You know what I mean? Just to try and get this perfect combustion thing. So you need this area, right? You need this area, and you want you want a good 
combustion, high compression ratios. So what you do is you fucking stop dicking around and you just do that. That's all you do. That's exactly what we had with this cone, apart from not missing the silly bit. Pistons are still light. You know, we have our valves. We have our valves coming down like so. And what do we do with our valves? Oh, well, we just fucking start taking chunks out of the piston. One, it makes it lighter. Number two is we're going to have clearance for when they open. And that's um, why hemi, hemi heads and all the rest of it pretty much been abandoned. Apart from the Americans, they keep on rocking it because they think there's something special about it. When there's not, you know what I mean? It's just... Lose the idea. It's about basic volumes and geometries. You know, when you start working out like this, you go, hang about, this is fucking wrong somewhere. And then you just end up something like this. This is why pent roofs are the shape they are. And this is why everyone else who's got half a brain cell is using them. So the fact of the matter is we have to come to we have to come to bear with the the, the tree the truth and the reality of things. Perfect combustion, ideal combustion would have been a sphere. We can't do that. The other problem is as well is that that's also with a homogeneous mixture that's just standing there, it's all good. When you do hemis, hemis or hemis with the weird bumps on, or when you do pent roofs, there's a problem, is that this flow is turbulent, it's flown in, we haven't got much time. It's flown in, spinning around, it's been compressed, it's going upwards and spinning around, it's doing all this shit. When you ignite it, I've got um, some pictures in a paper, uh, from a paper where they analysed flame front um, in turbulent air and ideal still air static and I'll show you some of the pictures in a video when we do that but um, that just shows you the actual simulations and the actual um, obser observed combustion um, throughout a cylinder and all the rest of it so that's you know why we have these kind of combustion chambers that's why nine times out of ten now when you open your fucking KTM four stroke or your Suzuki Bandit or your GSXR thousand, or your Mercedes Benz, or this, that, and the other, are all petrols. Nine times out of ten, you'll find a pent roof in there for a very good reason. If you open your engine and you've got two valves, and it's one of these kidney-shaped fucking stupid things, you open it up, you know, and you've got one of these kidney-shaped, which obviously isn't hemispherical. You know what I mean? And it's quite deep. You can fucking you know store your change in it like a fucking ashtray, then you probably live in America, you've probably got an LS engine or some variant of a Chevy long block or whatever, and it's a shit idea. It's a, you know, it's, your compression ratios aren't that high. Yeah, that's why we abandoned it, that's why the rest of the world went, this is stupid, and why they're even clinging onto it, because they've got to cling onto something. I hope that makes sense, I hope I've pissed off enough Americans, but it's just, you know, if you didn't do it, then I wouldn't be able to take the piss. It's generalising, yeah, but get over it. I hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.